Welcome to lab 9, Configuring DNS Records. This is part of the Microsoft Official Academic Course, Administering Windows Server 2012 R2. <clears throat> this exercise will be walking through the steps of exercise 9.1, Managing DNS Resource Records. The overview, in the previous lab you created several zones with the exception of default resource records that are created when you create a zone, you need to add resource records. Therefore, during this exercise you will create resource records. The mindset behind this exercise is that the host A or 4A resource record is the most common resource record which is used to resolve IP addresses from host names. However, you also need to be familiar with the other common resource records such as the PTR pointer, the MX, and the CNAME. <clears throat> the estimated time for this exercise is 15 minutes, so let's get started. I've already started my RWDC. And I'm just waiting for it to allow me to log in. I'm going to log in as Contoso slash administrator. Password. And again, this is the password that we are using throughout. And I'm just waiting for it to boot up into server manager click on tools and dns and I just wait for the dns manager console to load Okay, under the RWDC, if it isn't already expanded, we're going to go ahead and expand that. And now we're going to expand the forward lookup zones. So this brings us to the first question. What records will you find in a forward lookup zone? The answer. We're going to find the A or 4A records, the MX, the DNS, the SOA the C name and the SRV. We're going to right click at datum.com. So I'm going to left click, right click, and go into properties. And the properties dialog box is going to open. What records can you configure in the properties dialog box? The answer, you can configure SOA and the NS records. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go ahead and click on OK. And what is the default minimum for, oh, I need to pull that back up. Properties, click on SOA or Startup Authority. What records, or what is the default minimum TTL for the SOA records? And that's going to be one hour. Now we can go ahead and click on OK. All right, now we're going to go ahead and right click at datum.com. And we're going to choose new host. The new host dialog box appears. Now in the new host text box, we're going to type in PC1. So PC1. And then in the IP address, we're going to type in 192. Oops, try putting on the numlog. 192.168.1.201. <clears throat> and you want to make sure that this is checkmarked. Create associated pointer record. Actually, no, we're not going to check that box. Here we are. Go ahead and click on Add Host. Okay, now we'll go ahead and click on OK, and then Done. Now we're going to again right-click at datum.com, 
and new host. And this time we're going to call it PC2. And it's going to have an IP address. Oops. It's going to have an IP address of 192.168.1.202. And we're going to go ahead and click on Add Host, and then OK, and then Done. From here, if you're following along with or in your lab manual, this is where you would take your next screenshot. And before we go any further, I just want to correct this. This should be capitalized. See if I can edit properties. Nope, it's not letting me edit. Delete. Yes, and I'm just going to add that again. New host, PC1. I'm going to uncheck that box. 192.168.1.201. One nine two dot one six eight dot one dot two oh one. There we go. Now we can add host. And then OK. And then done. All right. Now we've got it right. OK. So now we're going to be, I'm going to minimize the forward and click on reverse. And click on the one six eight dot one. 92 node, this one right here. And notice that the 192.168.202 is here, but not the 192.168.1. The 192.168.1.201. If the 202 isn't here, if you simply click on F5, it'll refresh. Or if you want to right click, you can always click down here and click on refresh as well. But I have my IP that I need right here. All right, and that brings us to question four. What records are kept in the reverse lookup zones? The SOA, the NS, and the PTR. Okay, now we want to create a new pointer. So from here, I'm going to right click, new pointer. And this is going to be 192.168.1.201. The host name is going to be P, oops, PC1. And then we'll go ahead and click on OK. Um, the next question, how does the data for PC1 and PC2 differ? Here's PC1, here's PC2. How are they different? PC2 is pc2.adatum.com, and PC1 is just PC1. All right, now we're going to go ahead and double click on the 192.168.201. Double click. And we're going to change the host name from PC1 to pc1.adatum.com. Period. You want to make sure you add the period. We're going to go over that in just a minute. And then we'll go ahead and click on OK. That brings us to the next question. What does the period at the end signify? Well, it actually means it's, it actually signifies that it's a fully qualified um, domain. Let's take a look at the answer. I'm sorry. It indicates the internet root, and when placed at the end, it signifies the name is fully qualified. All right, let's go back. And again, if you're following along in your lab manual, this is where you would take your next screenshot. Now, we're gonna go ahead and right click at datum.com again. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and expand our forward lookup zones. We're gonna left click at datum.com and right click. And again, we're gonna do new host. And this time we're going to call it PC3. 
and we're going to give this an IP address of 192.168.1.203. We're going to select Create Associated Printer or Pointer PTR Record and add host. We're going to go ahead and click on OK and then done. We're going to right click a datum.com. And this time we're going to choose new alias. And in the name, we're going to type in www. And in the FQDN, target host, we're going to type in PC3 dot a datum dot com. Now, what is the fully qualified domain name? Um, a datum dot com. Let's take a look at our answers, and it is www.adatum.com. dot com. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and click on OK. We're now going to go into our command prompt. So right click, command prompt, and I'm going to make this a little bit larger so you guys can see it. Properties, font, and then OK, there. And we are going to see the PC3 resolved to its IP address. So we're going to type in NS lookup space pc3 dot a datum dot com and then enter so the name the address we got was 192.168.203 so what address was returned 192.168.1.203. Okay. Now, to see the IP resolution to its name, we're going to execute this command. We're going to type in ns lookup space 192.168.1.203 and then enter. pc3 at datum.com. Okay, so what name was returned? The pc3 dot at datum.com. All right, now let's go ahead and minimize again. And this time we're going to look to see the resolution of the alias www.adatum.com to its name and IP address. So we're going to type in ns lookup space www.adatum.com. Enter. Now we have the name, the address, and the alias. So question number 10, what name and IP address was returned? PC3 at datum.com and 192.168.1.203. All right. So now we're going to, I'm going to minimize this. We are going to right click at datum.com and choose new mail exchange or MX. And in the host or child domain text box, we are going to type in PC2. And in the fully qualified domain of the mail server, we are going to type in adatum.com. So what is the default mail server priority? Well, let's take a look. And it matches. It matches. Yay. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and click on OK. And 
now we're going to right click PC1 host A. So we're going to left click. Now that's PC2. There we go. Left click, right click, and properties. What fields are displayed? Let's see, we have the host, the FQDN, and the IP address. So let's take a look. What fields are displayed under question 12? Host, FQDN, and the IP address. All right. Now we're going to click on View, and then Advanced. Now we're going to right click PC1 host A record. And we're, yeah, we're going to choose properties. All right, now we have a little bit more detail here. What new field is now available with the advanced view? Um, the TTL or time to live. So TTL or time to live. So now we're going to change the time to live to 15 minutes. And then you're going to, if you're following along in your lab manual, this is where you would take your next screenshot. And then we'll go ahead and click on OK. And this is the end of this exercise and this video. The next exercise, we're going to be configuring round robin.